The fluid drag force changes with velocity and is often approximated as kV squared, where k is constant. When the velocity is less than millimeters per second, then we use a drag force equals kV. In this video, we will do the one-dimensional integration of the drag force that is proportional to the velocity. The integration for motion having drag force kV squared is done in the textbook and as homework. In reality, as the velocity varies across a few orders of magnitude, so does the so-called constant k, and this case is done as a numerical exercise. The two-dimensional case is a programming exercise. Here is the free body diagram for a mass that is tossed vertically into the air. The drag force points in the direction opposite the motion of the object. On the upward portion of the motion, the weight and the drag force both point in the same downward direction. In the downward portion of the motion, the drag force and the weight point in opposite directions. The two forces combine in the upward motion, but subtract in the downward motion. This means that the time taken to fall is greater than the time taken to rise. Let's write F equals MA for the case of an object that falls from rest and has frictional air drag that is K times V, where K equals constant. This can be true for velocities less than millimeters per second. Choosing downward to be the positive direction, Newton's law is the sum of the forces equals the downward positive weight mg minus the upward negative frictional drag force kV equals mass times acceleration. And since acceleration is the time derivative of velocity, we get m dv dt. When the object is released from rest, the velocity is zero, so the drag force is zero. As the mass falls, its velocity increases, and this increases the drag force. The mass stops accelerating when the upward drag force matches the downward weight of the object, and this means that the object has required its terminal velocity, v sub t, where the sum of the forces is zero, equals mg minus kvt, or the terminal velocity is mg over k. It is convenient to rewrite Newton's equation in terms of the terminal velocity. Dividing Newton's equation by k, we get mg over k minus v equals m over k dv dt. The first term is the terminal velocity. So we have vt minus v equals m over k dv dt. Move the differentials across the equal sign to get k over m dt equals dv over vt minus v, and then integrate both sides. Since vt is greater than v in the denominator, integration gives the negative log of vt minus v equals k over mt plus c1, where c1 is the integration constant. Taking exponentials of both sides, we get vt minus v equals c2 e to the minus k over mt, where c2 equals e to the c1. The integration constant c2 is found from the boundary condition that the velocity at t equals 0 equals 0. Since e to the 0 equals 1, we have vt minus 0 equals c2, which requires that c2 equals the terminal velocity, and our solution becomes v as a function of time equals the terminal velocity times 1 minus e to the minus kt over m. The velocity is within 95% of terminal velocity within 3 m over k time constants. The velocity is within 99% of terminal velocity within 5 time constants. To get the height as a function of time, we integrate again. We have dy dt equals v equals v terminal times 1 minus e to the minus kt over m. Moving the differential dt to the right side of the equal sign and integrating, we get y equals the terminal velocity multiplied by t 
plus m over k e to the minus kt over m plus c, where c is the integration constant. The object was released from the origin, so y at t equals 0 equals 0. This requires that c equals minus m times the terminal velocity over k. The solution is then y of t equals terminal velocity times t plus the terminal velocity over g times e to the minus kt over m minus 1. After several time constants have elapsed, this term becomes 0 and we're left only with this linear term. y then increases linearly in time. In the homework, you will use a equals v dv dy to find the velocity as a function of height.